Doing very fine. All right, I'm going to hop off video if you guys are ready. Just take it away. Yeah. I think we've got okay. 20, 25 minutes, Warren. Okay, great. Thank you, Lucas. You bet. Appreciate you. Hello, Thank doctor. you. Well, All good right. morning. How do you pronounce your last name? May? M -A -Y -E. As in the month? Yes, as in the month. With a little okay. at the end. And your, your name is Con Contreras? Contreras. Contreras. It's easier. Contreras. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's indeed a privilege and pleasure and honor to have this opportunity to chat with you today. Well, you know, thank you. It is mine as well. Incredibly important topic. Um, I'm editor-in-chief of the Salvation Army's magazine. It's called Essay Connect, Salvation Army Connects. And I just wanted you to know, a few months ago, we did a story about three Salvationists, well, actually four Salvationists who were struggling with cancer. It was well-received. I mean, uh, everybody wrote back and, and said how much how they were touched by it. And, you know, actually one of them has passed away. Uh -huh. And uh, I had just talked to a friend of mine just uh, just last night. He, he uh, had prostate surgery. So this this... This really hits home, you know, yes. to so many people. And so that's why I'm really incredibly excited about talking to you about it, uh, because I know it has no boundaries, but there are people out there like you who are giving hope and helping people to realize that there are options. And yes. so to talk about this, because I understand that you've actually, um, this year, had a success rate that's like three times the national average. How does that, mm -hmm. how did that come about? Tell me, tell me about how, What's how those results are, are so uh, strong and, and at this particular time? What are you doing that's different than what, what most people are, are doing? <laughs> well, I believe that the failure in oncology, more than practical or technical, is philosophical. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I mean by this is that the aim of oncology today is to destroy tumors. Okay. In fact, um, uh, I don't know if you knew this, mm -hmm. but when we, when we look at results, the results are what happens to the tumor. So if the therapy is effective in destroying the tumor, yes. even though the patient dies, it goes into the books as a success. What? Because the aim is what happens to the tumor. That's why you hear that, that there are many successes in cancer, but yet every year more people die of cancer than the year before. If you so, check that out, every year more people are dying of cancer than the year before. And so uh, in our experience, what we decided is that we're going to focus on the patient mm -hmm. and, and, and provide resources to the patient so that they can heal themselves, because that's how God designed us. He gave yeah. us an immune system. And so what we do is that we provide resources to the immune system, but not only physical, but it's not only therapies or medications or drugs or whatever, but mm -hmm. we also provide emotional and spiritual support. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I believe that this is the key ingredient for the difference in our results. We obtain much better results because our focus is the patient. And so I'd rather have a patient that uh, was told this was going to die in six months, and then five years later, the patient's still alive, but the tumor's still there. Mm -hmm. Right. So that would be considered yeah. a success. Well, I'd rather have a, a, a live failure. <laughs> then a dead success. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and I truly believe that when you, when you philosophically change the aim uh, of, of your therapy, yes. the results are going to be better. And that is why our results are so much better than, than others. Of course, uh, um, uh, our, our alternative therapies are very effective in certain mm -hmm. cases. Uh, we are not just an alternative hospital. We have all therapies available to, to the patients here. Radiation, chemo, surgery, and then all of the alternatives. So we have a, a much larger toolbox than most mm -hmm. oncologies, and, and, and that helps us, uh, you know, be more successful. But again, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's the, uh, is, is the philosophical uh, thrust that um, makes our, our therapy so effective and so different. So you believe that there's something in us already that needs to be triggered, brought alive through this type of approach that helps the healing process even more so than something coming from the outside like chemo or surgery or radiation or something like that. There's something else going on. Correct. In Correct. You know, the fact is that if your immune system is up to par, mm -hmm. you cannot develop cancer. Really? 
Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that you know, as I know, many yes. people that they are very old. You know, the, the little old guy that smoked all his life, drank, ate junk. It's 98. The mm -hmm. guy's 98. And just enjoying life. Well, you know, there are some people that even if they stab themselves, they wouldn't die because their immune system is so good. So good. But most of us have, have a compromised immune system. And then if on top of that, we compromise it more by eating not well, by not sleeping, by having no spiritual fortitude, well, then our immune system is going to fail and, and we're going to develop diseases. Uh, so uh, um, I, I rather exploit, in the good sense of the word, God's mm -hmm. design for health yes. than, than just give things from the outside. So about 70% of our efforts in the treatment of our patients with cancer is to improve and fortify the immune system of the patient. So how do you go about doing that? What, what is the process or what's in the toolbox that you use to help fortify the immune system? You know, well, so we, have, we have a number of methods. Uh, there, there are some you know, nutrients that are very uh, 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 immune uh, uh, supportive, but yeah. uh, we also have a vaccine, a very special mm -hmm. type of immune therapy that creates within the immune system an anti-tumor task force. Uh, mm -hmm. But there are many other immune stimulating actions that are available to all of us and they're free. Laughter, mm -hmm. meditation, prayer, music, uh, mm -hmm. the support of other family or loved ones or friends with prayer for your case. I believe that those are very strong immune stimulating actions. For instance, there's a study that shows that for every minute of anger, your immune system will drop significantly. Oh. While for every minute of laughter, uh, and, and that's for a period of six hours, okay? One minute of anger provokes a six hour drop in your immune system. One minute of laughter provokes a, 20, a 24 hour increase significant in your immune system power. That's Just amazing. Laughter. <clears throat> uh, wow. So, uh, I believe that our emotions play a major role in how our immune system works. Mm -hmm. So if you are spiritually strong, usually your emotions are going to be beneficial to you. And yes. that's why for us, it's so important to provide our patients with emotional and spiritual support. Uh, mm -hmm. Because the stronghold of cancer is fear, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? I mean, we all yes. know that we're going to die. And you Americans are going to pay taxes. Uh, here in Mexico, we could get away with it a little bit. <laughs> are you in Mexico right now? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 and so the, the problem is when somebody gives you a date. Yes. Right? You're going to die in six months. And oh, my God, what's going to happen to me after I die? Yes. That's the real fear, not of dying, is that am I sure that I'm going to go up or down? Mm. And yes. so for us, it's so important to present the person of Jesus Christ so that they know for sure that no matter what happens, they're victorious because they're going to spend eternal life in heaven. That's, That's our mission here. And, and, and when somebody has that, and it's absolutely convinced, the fear goes away. Mm -hmm. And we set people up for miracles because if there's no fear, then the cancer is like, well, it's no fun being in this person anymore. I'm going to go someplace else. And we see a lot of miracles. So I, I have to accept that our results are so good because there's so many miracles going on. That's awesome. And, you know, when you, as you were speaking there, you reminded me of a friend of mine, uh, known for many, many years. He is a kidney transplant, liver transplant surgeon. And uh, he has always said to me, Warren, you know, I'm just a mechanic, you know, but God does the healing. Amen. What do you think of that statement? You know, do you, absolutely that, true. You? Yeah, absolutely true. Everything is, you know, the miracle of miracles is that you spend eternity in heaven. Yes. Period. And so uh, uh, what, what we do here is very much like Hezekiah. We're negotiating for life. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> because, I mean, how long are we going to be in heaven? Forever. Yeah. So what's the rush? <laughs> Right. So, how, however, and, and whatever I, I have to do to to serve the Lord while I'm here, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to negotiate for life, knowing. No. Mm -hmm. right, right. And, and so, I agree totally with with your friend that we're just mechanics, but the one that does the healing is God. Now, I would imagine when people come to see you, they are probably have had some conversations with God already. Yes. So I don't and. and I don't suspect you encounter many atheists at your door or people who are skeptical about God, uh, who want to take on this type of uh, approach to, to ministry. So are, are most people open to this approach that who you treat or, or how does that work? Let me tell you that once you're facing death, you're <laughs> open to everything. So the, the staunch atheist, <laughs> will will open their heart. Muslims, uh, 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 Buddhists, we've had all, all of them. Yes. And it's the perfect time to open up uh, and, and talk about these things because they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're in your heart. Remember, we all have a void in our heart. Mm -hmm. And yes. that void can only be filled up with Jesus. So if you had other things, if you had science, if you had evolution, if you whatever... It, it, it just doesn't fit in your heart. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I, that's why we have more conversions here in our hospital than in many churches. That's amazing. Now, I was reading that uh, two, two very prominent presidents have declared uh, war on cancer, Nixon in 71, and most recently our new president Biden saying they want, you know, to end cancer as we know it. Well, how, yes. how do people know cancer? What, what, when you think of cancer, what do most people talk about, think about when they say, as we know it? Is, it, is that, a, is that a, a realistic expectation to eradicate cancer as we know it? You know, uh, cancer was mentioned already in Exodus. I mean, in, in, in the Bible, in, in, uh, in uh, Deuteronomy, um, you know, when, when God said, I, I give you life and I give you uh, death, I give you a blessing and I, and I give you a curse, choose life. And, yes. But he, he gives you a list of things to do because if, and if we do not comply, you will have permanent and malignant diseases says, and chronic diseases. So he, he makes a difference between chronic ailments and malignant ailments. Yes. So uh, cancer has been with us uh, uh, forever. I, I don't think that we, can, that we can change that, but definitely we can do a lot to avoid it. Uh, I wrote a book recently called uh, The Art and Science of Undermining Cancer. <laughs> and in this book, the main aim is to provide information that will inspire people to make changes, whether they have cancer or not. So we have a lot of prevention and we have a lot of acts that patients with cancer can do, activities that cancer patients can do to improve their condition. Mm -hmm. And it's really based on many biblical principles. Um, and, and so I, I believe that what we can change and, and the aim of this book is to, to withdraw and erase the, the mentality that cancer is a death sentence. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can do that. And, and that's what we try to do with our patients. You know, yes. cancer is not a death sentence. You can, you can treat it, you can live with it, you can, you can prolong your life or you can get rid of it. It is mm -hmm. possible. It's difficult, but it's possible with, with God's help. Uh, but, uh, you know, that you are going to find a drug and, and you're going to find a procedure that gets rid of cancer, that is a fallacy. That Cancer is just an extremely complicated disease, mm -hmm. uh, multifactorial. Um, and, and so I, I believe that we can do a lot to dampen the negative effects of cancer. Yes. Uh, and that we can do a lot of prevention, definitely. Can we get rid of it? I doubt. Okay. So your book focuses on, the, you said you focus primarily on the patient rather than on the, the, the process or the tumor, so forth. Uh, do you have any advice for caregivers, you know, for um, who are giving care to people who are suffering from cancer uh, in, in, your, in your work? Yes. 
Yes, uh, it's very difficult. This is a, a disease that affects the whole family. Yes, yes. And because it can, it can be devastating also financially. In, in many ways, it affects the, the family. So what we, we have, you know, even a program for, for the companions of, of the patients here to also give them uh, tremendous emotional and spiritual support. And, and I find that one of the things that, that helps a caregiver the most is uh, that their, their, their sacrifice provides so much worth to the life of the other. You know, it adds value to the life yeah. of, of, yes. of, the, of, of the patient in, yes. in, in the much stronger way than any medication that I can do. And that's why, you know, Jesus said that, you know, there's no better friend than one that lays his life, right? Mm -hmm. And so when, when you give everything away, you, you sacrifice everything to be with a person that has cancer, you are adding so much value to that life. And, and that act itself, the sacrifice itself, is tremendously encouraging and beneficial for the caregiver. Uh, yeah. But there is no, there are no easy solutions for for this. It's just, it's a very, very difficult solution for the caregiver, and and especially when the caregiver, for instance, is a parent. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it is, it is just so heart wrenching, you know. But but I mean, there's nothing like prayer and and to and to hold on to your belief that God, through all of these problems, is there with you and will not leave you alone. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's one of the things that we do for, for the patients and for the companions, just to make sure that they understand, like, like the footprints on the sand, remember that? Yes. that God is always there. When, when you think that God has left you, yes. the footprints are his and not yours because he's carrying you. Uh, yes. and, and, and so I, I just believe that uh, you know, faith plays a major role in, in going through these process. And the words of Paul come, come to me always, and I tell the patients that he said, you know, my trials and tribulations are light and temporary. Mm -hmm. And you say, what? They're not mm -hmm. light and they're, they, they, I mean, the patient is suffering. But, you know, he suffered a lot. And yet he says, they're, they're, they're nothing in comparison to what? Mm -hmm. To the glory that is to come. And I think that that, that uh, is the best way to help people when they're going through trials and tribulations. They're they're harsh. They're difficult. I you know I have no answer because uh, God is sovereign and He's going to do what He's going to do. I just have to believe that He's going to do it for my benefit. And my benefit in His eyes are, is my eternal life. Yes, yes. And I, I know people tend to be uh, sometimes skeptical, even cynical about. Um, the whole process you, you know you talk about faith and and uh, the, the lack of even trust in the system that's that's supposed to be driving toward a cure you know some people say well you know it's too lucrative for a cure you know mm -hmm. so many people are making money off of the, the process why would they want to stop it you know even if it's just saving lives what i know you're undermining the whole thing of cancer in your in your book the art and science of undermining cancer are we also in, in a battle to undermine skepticism, undermine this kind of doubt and frustration that people have, or even misinformation that's being disseminated? I, I think that's one of the purposes of, of my book, to provide information that is, is uh, valid. And, and you will see that you know about a third of the book are references, scientific references, yes. that, um, uh, uh, that, I, that I hope will encourage people that that uh, even though, yes, there's a lot of money involved, um, there's billions and billions of dollars uh, spent every year uh, against cancer. And, and, and so when you spend them, somebody's making money. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I do believe that there's a lot of us there just trying to help people through the process. And, 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 and again, like I said, we're, we're negotiating for life. And if mm -hmm. God provides somebody 15 more years, 20 more years, five more minutes, Yes. So be it. And, and, and uh, so I, I just have to, uh, you know, somebody asked me once I was giving a conference to, 
to a number of doctors and I was and, and, and I was the last one to speak and everybody was speaking about you know how the cells work and and billions of years of evolution and all and then I said you know because God created all, all of this and, and it's God's creation and at the end of the my talk one one uh, doctor uh, came to me and says do you really believe in God and not in evolution and I told him well listen my faith is not sufficient to believe that everything that happened happened by chance so it's much easier for me to believe in God because that that makes a little bit more sense and he said but how can you believe in a God that is so cruel and evil and, and allows for cancer and not well uh, you know welcome to the club we, we're, we all have problems with God's sense of justice <laughs> that's not gonna go away you know no matter how much I believe in God I believe sometimes he's you know he he, he needs a little bit of advice for instance why don't God, why don't you give cancer to all of those people that are on death row? That would make more sense. Um, but but God is God. He, he's going to do what he's going to do. And, and, and I believe that in, in, in my heart, he's always good and, and he's always faithful. And now, when you go to the medical conferences and you meet doctors in different areas of uh, disciplines and so forth, when they see you, do they kind of say, oh, he's a holistic medicine person, you know, body, mind, and spirit type person who's approaching medicine? How, how, are, how are they talking about you? How are they categorizing you in the whole realm of, of cancer uh, medicine? Well, I can tell you that 15, 20 years ago, I was just a quack. Uh, now <laughs> I'm, I'm an alternative doctor. Uh, now alternative more doctor. and more people are, are looking into, uh, into meditation and stuff like that to help patients. Yes. They acknowledge that helping patients psychologically and, and emotionally is very beneficial for the patient. Mm -hmm. Very few of them acknowledge it spiritually. It's also oh. very beneficial to the patient. Yes. But uh, the criticism has died down a lot because marketing is, is powerful. And since most people are looking for something, even big hospitals now have meditation mm -hmm. and have acupuncture and have stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yes. Um, uh, so it has changed dramatically in the last uh, two decades. I would imagine these latest statistics about your success rate must be quieting a, a lot of critics as well. I mean, even in the midst of uh, COVID, when people are can't even get to sit at their bedside of a dying um, relative, somehow your success rate of with cancer patients has soared. Yes. Well, what do you, I know you're, you're saying it's the spiritual side of it. Well, that, that I think that, you know, our therapies are also very effective. We, we uh, are, are treating cancer with, for instance, high dose intravenous vitamin C that has proven oh. to be very effective in destroying tumor cells without any of the side effects. It destroys tumor cells very similarly to chemo mm -hmm. and to radiation, uh, but without any of the side effects. And mm -hmm. so when, when you're able to treat a patient and destroy a tumor without destroying more the immune system because chemotherapy and radiation therapy wipe out the immune system. That's yes. why the recurrence rate is so high. Yes. Because even though you got rid of, let's say 99.9% .9 of the malignant cells, that 0.09% is gonna be free to do whatever they want because there's no immune system. And that's yes. why the recurrence rate is so high. It comes Whereas out even we, worse. We, we use therapies that destroy tumor in a similar way to chemo, but without affecting the immune system. And then on top of that, we're working for the immune system. And, mm -hmm. and, and so ozone therapy does the same thing. Uh, uh, hyperthermia is another therapy that has been proven to be quite effective uh, against cancer uh, that very few people are using. Say that uh, again, hyper... Hyperthermia, heating hyperthermia. up the patient. And this came about because uh, in, in the late 1800s, a, an oncologist noticed that patients that had very high, fe high fevers from yes. an infection, when they survived the infection, their, their cancers would go away. Mm, interesting. And so it had, a, it, it, you know, they thought that it was just the heat. Obviously, when you have an infection and, and, you, and you deal with it without antibiotics, it's because your immune system was woken up, right? So it was a two punch. Uh, immune system better, heat kills cancer cells, and, and, and so benign cells can withstand a lot of heat, whereas malignant cells cannot. So you can kill cancer with heat. Um, and so we have this very specific hyperthermia therapy 
that has also proven to be very effective without affecting the immune system. So we do, you know, attack the tumor directly, trying to kill it, but without damaging the immune system. And when we have to use chemotherapy, well, we're also supporting the supporting the immune system at the same time. That's interesting. I was reading a comment made by, I think her name was Sophie Savage, who was a, uh, um, a cancer survivor. She, she's uh, mentioned as uh, one of the endorsers of your, bo of your book, talking about the uh, incredible amount of uh, lung tumors that she's had on and off and, and how um, various forms of your, your therapy has kept her alive and kept her going far beyond her uh, done date you know, that she yes. got so many years ago. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of patients like that, that come through your Very door. many patients uh, like that, you know, and, and, and the tumor doesn't necessarily go away completely, so. That's what she said. Uh, she sure. said she still has a, a tumor. <clears throat> yeah, so that's why we all talk about five-year survival rates, correct? Yes. Uh, uh, so a cure is when there's no evidence of tumor activity for a period of five years consecutive after being diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of our patients are alive with tumor activity, but enjoying yeah. life completely. So mm -hmm. they come to a point where they said, you know, I can live with this cancer. Mm -hmm. How does a person who's interested in, in your therapy get in touch with you? Uh, are you uh, located in the United States? To call us. Okay. Uh, our, our, our number is 888 hope or, or to open our website, uh, oasisofhope.com, and yes. you will get all the information there. Uh, we provide, you know, a, a free consultation for anybody that wants a second opinion. If they yes. send me information, I will review their case and send information, and that is of, of no cost. And uh, uh, when you visit our, our, our website, you can download an ebook of, of the book uh, Undermining Cancer, The Art and yeah. Science of Undermining Cancer, completely free. And I think oh. this, this type of information will, will help you make intelligent decisions on, on what to do you know, for your case or for your loved ones. Yes. Now, Dr. Contreras, do you also have any publicity photograph photography that I could go to your website and download? Yes, definitely. I will ask uh, uh, my assistant to send you whatever you need. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. You're really very welcome. Having this conversation, and uh, I pray the Lord will continue to use your ministry. You know, thank you very much. People. The same as the same as you. We, we've always been supportive to to the Salvation Army. El Ejército de Salvación in Mexico. Uh, oh, gracias. <laughs> Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. <laughs> very good. Well, thank you very much, Mr. May. Thanks, God bless you. All right.